God said, I will give you an oath, a promise. And in the 15th chapter of Genesis, the oath is described. Take an animal, and in that instance it was three, cut them in two and lay them side by side. And then in, in, in an act that God showed him, he said, I will walk with you through those pieces and to the other side. Do you know what the meaning of that is? In that culture, if a person was, had possession of land for which he was supposed to pay, or it was his own, and he became so poor that he had to sell off that piece of land, and then the people around him re realized that, man, if he sold off his piece of land, then he would starve to death. Then there would be a way in which this person could redeem the land, for instance. But he had no money to buy the land back. Then somebody else could redeem the land for him. But there was a stipulation. A friend couldn't do it. A person from another country couldn't do it. Only a blood relative could redeem that piece of land. So what would happen if a person did not have a blood relative? There was a way out. And that was this oath. It was called the covenant of blood or the oath of blood. You take an animal, split it down, put the two, side, two pieces on sides and then you hold the hand of the person who is able and willing to buy the land back for you and walk with him across those pieces that were laid on the ground. The meaning is, once you walk across, you both become like those two pieces were before one. It also was another, has another meaning. That this oath that you made is a binding oath for life. Once you go across that, you cannot retrace your steps. You cannot go back and say, I made a mistake. No, once you go across those two pieces, you are bonded for life like blood brothers or sisters. And if ever you break your promise, you break that oath, then you will be done to as was done to that animal before when it was one, split in two. In other words, it was a blood covenant. God, when he told Abraham, I will make things come to pass, said, I will walk with you, Abraham, and the whole human race, hold your hands, and I will walk with you beside the two pieces, and we shall become one. Blood relatives. That is what Jesus did. He became blood relatives with you and me. And then paid the price for the land that was gone. That's your sins and mine. I'm ascending to your father and my father. Most relationships that we envision between God and humans, it is the humans who must bring their offerings and their sacrifices to God. Isn't that how we look at it? When we want to go and worship God, we bring the offerings. This man's religion is absolutely unique. In this man's religion, it is God who brings the offering for you and me to accept. Entirely different. Most of us think that we should bring a good, acceptable offering to God. In this instance, it is God who makes the offering and brings it to you and me for our acceptance. Does it not make you humble that he would do such a thing? Place you as the most important in his life? Will you accept my offering, he says? You know, when that happens, and we accept it as he shows it, then our response is what he expects. A response of sheer gratitude. That's all. And in that gratitude, 
there is loyalty. Of course there is. Wouldn't you be loyal to somebody who has you know, pulled you out of a, a whirlpool in which you were going to drown? Of course. Similarly here, Christianity is not primarily following a set of rules. Christianity actually is a standing ovation to somebody who has performed so well that you can't help but applaud. That is the, the picture. And so, this is how I ended my search of those 20 years. If this God was careful to preserve sufficient evidence to address my cold questioning intellect, that was the previous hours that we spent together, and if he left enough warmth and passion in his portrayal to grip my wandering emotions, then my response is from deep within a place called my heart that now feels safe enough to hang its eternal destiny on this man whose story unfolds and is laid open in this book. I have signed my name because that is how I ended my search. And I leave it to anyone who listens. Do your search. Be honest about it. Take all the evidence that you can possibly bring. Lay it side by side. And then make a decision. I believe you will be the better off for that. And if you find something that grips your heart with a passion, then let it grip your heart. Your lives will be rich. I guarantee you that. And I pray and I wish you in your journey of search that you will come to the harbor of fulfillment and find fulfillment, blessings and peace in your life. I bid you adieu.